There are a lot of really conservative individuals who are libertarians. They believe that we should have no government or as little government as possible. I'm going to offer a critique of some of those ideas and explain some of the dangers of libertarianism. A lot of uh, my critique comes from political philosopher Thomas Sproggins. He wrote a book called Civic Liberalism, Reflections on Our Democratic Ideals. And so one of the first critiques of libertarianism is that when individuals are able to build uh, vast amounts of wealth, huge corporations, they often are really oppressive to their workers. Uh, history shows this. For example, in the Gilded Age, before there was as much government regulation, you had um, individuals like John Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, who were exploiting their workers ruthlessly, paying them as little as they could while these workers suffered and worked long, horrible days in factories. A lot of them would get injured. A lot of them um, were getting sick. Some of them were dying. And so if there's no government regulation at all, then it can be horrible working conditions for the employees. A lot of libertarians don't want to focus on that part of history in the Gilded Age. Another critique of libertarianism is that in a good, decent society, citizens have a moral obligation to make sure that children don't suffer too much because of the incompetence and negligence of their parents. Kids don't choose which situations they're born into. And so if you have a kid that's born into a really poor family with parents who can't provide, do we not as a society have an obligation to make sure that his needs, his or her needs are met? Uh, libertarians would argue that it's all about individual responsibility. And so children could suffer under that condition. We, we have a society to make sure that they meet their nutritional needs, to make sure that they're able to go to school. And so to chalk it all up to individual charity, um, that could be dangerous. A lot of libertarians, they want to privatize K-12 through education. What about the poorest uh, kids whose families can't afford that? And so some libertarians argue, oh, well, there's enough individuals that would, that would help them pay for that. I, I'm not so sure. History and psychology don't suggest this. As humans, we are very self-interested. History shows that humans are often indifferent to the suffering of others, especially those in faraway places who they don't know. So to believe that the wealthy individuals will help them out uh, could be problematic. This could be unrealistic. Another critique of libertarianism is that a lot of libertarians focus on this idea of a self-made man or woman. Uh, they believe that individuals are just independent, um, that they own themselves, which uh, when we really look at it, we are the sum of the society that we uh, experienced from we're the sum of our our parents our friends our teachers and so if we benefit uh, from society structures like K through 12 education then it makes sense that we contribute and give back to it everyone here in the United States benefits from um, clean water from roads from good infrastructure and so to believe that we, we're all just individuals and we don't need to, to pay back, then you're taking from a system uh, but not contributing back to it. And so it makes sense that a lot of libertarians uh, grew up in very wealthy homes. For example, Charles and David Koch, the Koch brothers, they're really big into libertarianism. They inherited hundreds of millions of dollars from their father. And so it makes sense that they wouldn't want to give any of this money up. Um, they say that we're all individuals, it's all about individual responsibility. That's an awfully convenient argument when they're born into a really wealthy family. Individuals that are born into disadvantaged situations, should we just say, screw them? Like it's, it's their fault that they were born into that situation. As long as they work hard enough, they're going to be fine. If we don't provide basic necessities for kids, if we don't give them a chance for an education, then we failed them as a society. We didn't give them a chance when they were born into a disadvantaged situation based off of no fault of their own. If we keep these public programs of K-12 education, um, roads, basic, basic welfare services for kids, then people are going to have a higher chance of escaping poverty and climbing the social ladder. If we cut these things, then we're, we're screwing over people who are born into disadvantaged situations.